Hello. Uh, we have studied the multicollinearity problem or the failure of a full rank condition so that uh, the model is not identified. So now then, we are going to discuss what happens in practice in finite sample. So far, everything was uh, based on the assumption that we could have infinite number of observations. Still, the problem does not uh, or is not be resolved even in the the limit but then what happened in the finite sample that's on another actually a different question so let's think about this when uh, simply when you think about two regressors case a uh, theoretical definition of multicollinearity or uh, the identification failure theoretically happens only when the correlation coefficient between the two regressors is exactly plus one or minus one, right? However, think about this. Of course, if it's perfectly plus one or minus one, nothing you can do. So it's perfect multicollinearity. But what happens in the finite sample, you observe point, a correlation coefficient of point 0.99999, almost one, but not exactly one. Then we call this near multicollinearity. Um, so you can think like this. Think about this, this simple uh, uh, equation. You are solving for x. If you would like to solve it for x, then it's simple that x is b over a. However, you need a condition that a is not equal to zero. Right, you learned it. So as long as a is different from zero, the solution is unique, and there exists a unique solution. However, if you do it in a computer, suppose that a is not zero, but it is very very small, like 0 0.000001. Then the problem here is there may be there may be many problems. Say it is too small. So a small error in the numerator will be amplified, right? So dividing like a small number, uh, something by very, very small number will be a large number. So small, small error will become very large. So your estimator may be very inaccurate. Or in an extreme case, A is too small for the computer to understand or add the result is too large for uh, computing the memory so out of memory problem may happen so in this case in theory in mathematics you only said as long as a is different from zero there is no problem in uh, the solution it's unique however in practice when you calculate that it's not simply whether it's zero or not if it's too close to zero, there is similar problem. There is a similar problem. Basically, the problem is similar in the, the, those two theoretical problem and the practical problem are coming from the same uh, rationale, same intuition. So you have to relax the definition of the problem a little more in finite sample for calculation, for computation. So one example you would like to estimate predict life expectancy using weight, blood pressure, and other, uh, other measures. However, what's interesting here is the weight and the blood pressure are highly correlated. So the heavier an individual is, the higher the blood pressure is likely to be. So, and from the data, you can find that the correlation is 95%. So, Theoretically, this is not 1, this is not equal to 1, but it, so, so you may think it's too large, 0.95 can be close to 1, depend, which is relative. So, what, 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 so the, why, why is it relative? Because how close to 1 depends on uh, the sample size. If your sample size is huge, like say several billion, say you observe everyone from the United States, then 
uh, 95% correlation really is nothing. It's 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 okay because 0 0.05 is still different from zero given uh, your sample size. You can you can so you can um, so this correlation coefficient will cause problem in your estimator. However, that problem so the drop the decreased the compromised uh, accuracy will be offset by large sample size. So as a result, your estimator will be fine, right? Here, large correlation will decrease your accuracy, but large sample size will uh, increase your accuracy. So in the end, you'll be fine. However, if the sample size is small, 0.95 can be critical. So then it's relative and more subjective. There is no clear rule whether you're you are in a multicollinearity or not. So just conceptually, you should be careful when you uh, handle uh, variables that are highly correlated. So then, uh, the simple, there is no other solution. Though, so when you have inaccurate uh, results or high standard errors, the only way is to increase whether, uh, like, so either uh, increase the sample size, which is not possible in most cases. Alternatively, you'd like to drop one of them. Remove weight or blood pressure from the regression. That's the case. Another example arises from some uh, econometric methods. So later you are going to learn two-stage two stage least squares estimator. Uh, it takes the form of something like this. So x is replaced by something else and x2 is also replaced by something else but something else take a similar form so uh, why why do we use uh, why do we use z here and we are coming back to that point uh, maybe in the next chapter so just think about this so instead of suppose that you do not observe x1 and x2 so you you use a combination of a linear a combination of z instead of x1 another linear combination of z for x2 and then they are likely to be correlated because they depend on the same variables and another example is Heckman's two-stage estimator same thing uh, so same thing x appears here and another x appears here they are the same so they may be highly correlated so this is so the multicollinearity arises from some in some techniques by uh, by other techniques but uh, if you have learned two stage least squares you can understand this otherwise we are going to learn these techniques later so then uh, at that time uh, when when you learn this technique think about this problem at in at the time so then okay now you understand what's the problem in the final sample and uh symptoms how can we tell uh the symptoms are uh, if all the so the basically the result of the consequence of multicollinearity is either two things first your program cannot calculate anything so it's obvious there is nothing you can get there is no result so and like usually because the matrix is singular the in the procedure you need to invert a matrix but if the matrix is not invertible your program will stop computing so uh, that's one possible symptom and another typical symptom is you get something you obtain something but the standard errors are very large so like this kind of thing so this kind of thing the denominator is not exactly zero. If the denominator is exactly zero, then computer will stop there. Uh, but even if the, the denominator is not equal to zero, but it's small, very, very small, so the result is very, very large. So that's that. So in statistics, that is when you have a uh, large standard errors. Uh, so if the standard errors are small and coefficients are significant, there is no problem there that's nice but if you think the standard errors are too large how can we 
tail. So a simple symptom is what's interesting here is very large standard errors for each coefficient. Uh, especially large standard errors for the coefficients involved in the multicollinearity. However, the joint significance may be good. So when you look at the whole equation, so like R square or F statistic are significant. They are good. However, there is no significance in, in a single uh, variable. Then you have to uh, think about multicollinearity. Uh, so, and another thing you need to understand here is, uh, suppose that you have three variables, x1, x2, x3, and suppose that x1 and x2 are highly correlated, highly correlated, so they have multicollinearity problem. And however, x3 is not. x3 have enough independent variation. Then in this case, beta3 will be fine. Beta3 is not affected, but beta1 and beta2 will have large standard errors. So that's typically what you see uh, from the results. So you can tell what, well, which variables cause the problem. So I believe it's, it's more uh, about experience. So you, you need to uh, look at many data to see uh, what you have when you have multicollinearity. And by the way, multicollinearity is actually not bad. Uh, so I mean, I mean, it's not bad, not difficult to handle because you can see that. You can see there is a multicollinearity or not, or see the, 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 the symptoms are clear and the solution is clear and uh, it, you can check it uh, more clearly. So because, because it's how you test it you need you you want to test whether there is a real problem or not there are two typical ways one is simply calculate the correlation coefficient so calculate correlation coefficient of all variables all pairs of the independent uh, variables and if some of them have a uh, strong correlation then you have to worry about you have to look more careful what's going on there so the problem is so this is very simple because many statistical programs have uh, automatic uh, built-in command for uh, to calculate correlation coefficients so it's simple however the problem here is if multicollinearity is caused by three variables together then uh, then the correlation coefficient cannot capture those problems because correlation coefficient uh, is defined only for a pair of variables. It cannot extend. It cannot be extended to three variables. So maybe not enough. And then to extend the concept of the correlation coefficient, you may want to use auxiliary regressions. This is so you are checking the basically multicollinearity is the linear relationship among the independent variables so what you do here is check the relationship by regressing one of the independent variables on the others and see if r square is large if the r square is large if say r square is say 95 percent that means these variables all explains 95 percent of this uh, x1 so x1 has only 5% independent variation. So uh, there, there may be something, uh, some problem going on uh, between x1 and something among these guys. So you may uh, check all k different variables using uh, one of the k independent variables on the left hand side. You can check what happens and they are called auxiliary regressions. Uh, higher R square, high R square, near 100% is implies uh, is implying the multicollinearity problem. Solution: There is no clear solution. Uh, increasing the sample size always helps, but it is not easy to find more data. Uh, so most common way is to drop some variables. Drop one. There is no way. There. So 
basically multiple linearity is sim is saying that two variables are too similar. Multiple variables are moving too close to each other. So that means they are the same variables. So uh, in this case, uh, there is no way but dropping one of them uh, to avoid the overlap uh, using same variables again. And later, when when you uh, in some two-stage regression uh, models, we impose exclusion restrictions, which which is related to the multiple linearity again. So exclusion restriction is to is one important assumption, commonly used assumption, to allow uh, some independent uh, variation in your uh, method. So watch for this uh, when you hear this uh, assumption, think about multiple linearity again. Okay, this is the end of uh, chapter one, and I'm going to post homework one based on the multiple linearity and identification. So, and in the next lecture, I will uh, demonstrate how to use leaks. So leaks is, leaks is how I make the lecture note and uh, uh, you need to type your answer, uh, type your answer into a PDF file, which is what you need to do in the dissertation later. So it will be a good practice. So try your best, try your best to um, to make it make your homework more formal. That will help you in the future. So I'm going to make a short video on uh, on that. So, and uh, I will give you maybe two or three weeks to do the homework. So, uh, good luck. Do not cheat. That's the worst. So, I, did I tell you that I, I love uh, catching uh, the cheaters? I enjoy that. I want to be, uh, I'm, I think I'm the, I'm, I take pride in being strict. I'm, I think I'm the most strict professor in, in the department. So don't try me, don't test me, and work by yourself, work on your own. And um, yeah, see you later, bye.